There are 10 principles that's helped me the most when I was trying to uh, improve my dating life. And these 10 principles I have compiled over 15 years of learning how to date and then becoming a coach to help people find their partners. And I wanna share these 10 principles with you today. In a short presentation, I will call the 10 principles to improve your dating life. So first, let's define dating freedom, right? What is dating freedom? To me, it's the ability to date girls that you want without feeling like you're settling by repeating a predictable process. For the majority of my clients, 95% of them, overwhelmingly, they just wanna go through a period where they're dating different people to discover what they like. And then they wanna find that one person they feel like they didn't have to settle for. The first step really is, this is exactly where I'm at. And because when I started out, as you can see in the PowerPoint, I was not good with women. And I associated that with my worth as a person. It's like, because I'm not good with women, I'm a useless piece of crap. And I was also afraid to ask for help. I thought that if I asked for help in this area, that I would be less of a man for doing so. And then I also was ignorant. I thought maybe I was, some people are just born this way. This is not a skill set. You, you either have it or you don't. And so because of those three limiting beliefs, after college, I, those are my friends from college. That girl actually was my friend who my other friend ended up dating. And I had no style, no social skills. And my friends from college, they visited me in New York, but ultimately they lived in different cities and I was pretty much alone most of the time. And after two years of that, I started becoming depressed. I didn't have real connections with people and I wasn't even able to get a date. And I started feeling really, really sad about my life. And so even though college was a great learning experience, the, the principle that I learned is always see things as close to reality as possible and learn to accept the truth that reality is telling you. If you don't admit where you are now, you cannot move forward. I have friends who pretend they have an awesome life or pretend they're really good at something, but all their energy is spent uplifting that image, right? And when I let that crumble, I decided this is exactly where I'm at and therefore accepting that truth allowed me to do something about it and move forward. A lot of times when we're depressed also, we think of things as worse than they are. What you'll find as you identify the real issue is that it's not that bad. I'm still young. I might be a dork. I can work out. I can change my style. I can learn how to talk to people, right? I'm not like mute, I don't, I'm not missing an arm. And you start to realize that things are not as bad as your mind is tricking you uh, to be. And so that gives you a step forward, which leads me to my second principle, which is live your life according to what you want, not the expectation of others. And this is an important principle because I spent my whole life getting good grades, going to a good school, getting a good job, everything from other people, my parents, so society, pressure from friends, what I thought people thought of me. And I was behaving in a way that I thought would make them happy. Everyone except myself. And when I made that shift, right, live your life to your expectations, not others, I started to realize that I could give myself the permission to make some mistakes, to try out some new things, and just see if it's right for me. And that led me to making a decision, right? I was gonna build my confidence by learning how to talk to people where I had no success with women and with making friends. I wanted to do, really do something about that. And I took the steps and I started putting together a plan to do that. And the truth is, wherever you are now in life, like the earlier you start, the better. This is a graph that someone showed me during the pandemic, but I think it applies as you age as well. If you're a young guy, right, in the beginning, up until you graduate college, you can do most of what you want. But the earlier you start doing the right things that change your trajectory, that trajectory becomes exponential. Warren Buffett is actually not the greatest investor based on returns per year. Jim Simmons, a mathematician is, but Warren Buffett started investing when he was a little kid. So his timeline is higher, 65 out of the 69 billion he made in his, the later part, after he was 65. So start young. And if you don't do the right things, people are just always trying to catch up after a certain age, you know? It's always one step behind. Oh, I gotta marry now, I gotta have kids. Oh, I gotta get a new job, get a new house. I'm stuck with this mortgage. You're just always like doing some things right, but you always feel like you're catching up. And then you have the people that do nothing. And as you age, the, more, the longer you do nothing, the more shit happens. And it just gets worse and worse, okay? The earlier you start living your truth, 
the better your life will be. Success is built slowly, but disaster happens like that, right? When, when the stock market crashes or when something bad happens, it happens very quickly. But when we're building success, oh, it's an overnight success. No, it's not. It's gradual, gradually get better. And then one day you just hit that tipping point where people start seeing it's obvious now that you've gotten better over this time. I started testing out one thing at a time. One day I would go out and I'd be like, how do I introduce myself in a non-creepy, weird way? How do I ask for her name in a comfortable way? How do I tell my story quickly within a one minute period so that they know what I'm about and why I'm talking to them? I built one pillar at a time, one brick at a time, and eventually you build a house. Learn to make mistakes, but not life-changing mistakes, right? Like learn to talk to people, but don't get into like a life-altering fight. Um, don't catch an STD that's incurable, right? So learn to make those mistakes, but avoid the really, really dangerous ones, okay? Because that changes the rest of your life for good. And when you're young, you don't quite think of your life in that long of a period of time, but it can affect you. One thing I really learned is that your look is more important than your looks. I'm not particularly good looking at my face. I'm tall, but I'm skinny. But I realized that if I changed the way that people perceive me through style, I was able to even get into fashion week, even though I'm not the best looking guy. And so I, I realized how important style is to uh, at least your dating life, right? And some would argue your professional life too. If you want to learn more about style attraction triggers and how they really work, check out high integrity skills slash style four. The principle eight is that, you know, this is not a mathematical model. It's not a financial model. This is art and science, right? So some of my clients, I teach them step by step, but other times it's like, how do I improv? How do I pick up that energy and move with it? And when you add structure, there is freedom to that structure. But once you understand the frame, then within that frame, you can be free and ex really, really express yourself. And there's nothing more rewarding than being able to truly express yourself uh, in life. These are just some of the successes I've had over the years, some of the uh, amazing people that I've had the privilege and, and the fortune to meet. And then principle number nine is let you know, these skill set, where once you know what they are, or once you've learned them, enrich your life, but not define it, right? So for me, it's like my mission now, now that I've achieved what I wanted, how can I help others do the same? And how can I instill that knowledge efficiently, right? Which is why you should sub to this channel and give this video a like. And the last principle is, when you're in the trenches, it just feels like, oh my God, my life's on the line. This is so life or death. But when I look back on all of them, my journey, it's like you got to stop and have fun. When I was taking salsa class, my dance instructor told me, don't take bachata, don't take waltz, learn the fundamentals of salsa. And then you can learn the other dance moves because now you have a foundation to which you understand deeply what it is. And so once I did that, I was able to add structure to my game. I was also able to improv, sometimes just going off the flow. I was able to build an authentic attraction model. And then I was able to recognize that for Asian guys, there's this unconscious bias. And I'm like, well, how do I get past that as an Asian guy in America? And I developed a lot of techniques to be able to do that, that allow me to have the results that I have. So what are some practical lessons you can take from my principles, right? One is admit and ask for help and be honest with yourself about where you're at. Ideally, you don't spend the time trying to learn from your own mistakes. You copy what already works and then you adapt it to yourself because that'll save you years of your life. I guarantee you. You could get a coach and if you do, focus on one method first until you understand the principles of that method. Then move on to the next and see what works for you. Reference experiences. These are experiences that kind of change your limiting beliefs, right? The first time I was able to get a girl's number in front of her brother. The first time I was able to hook up with a girl on the same day. The first time I got a girlfriend that I really liked, that I felt was out of my league. These things start changing your belief systems about what's possible and what the world is like. And with those reference experiences, you start gaining social momentum. And you start having these breakthrough moments where you're like, yes, I can do it. One thing I do is I focus on being universally attractive, not just you know, getting a certain type of girl, just how do I become the man that most, a lot of women would find attractive, right? What are some things I can improve there? My style, my communication, my eye contact, my nonverbals, the way I speak, my voice, all of those things. My facial expressions are variables in this game of attraction that can really impact how someone feels about you. And lastly, once I had those down, it was about building a life, you know? And it wasn't about getting that one particular girl or proving to someone. It was the fact that I could use these skills to socially navigate and create a great life for myself and the people that I love in my circle. 
I believe that freedom of choice is your right. You have a right to pursue happiness in your life. It's a very American <laughs> concept, but you should be free and, and to have the tools to do that. And I hope that I can help you on your way. So if you want to get your dating life handled, right, beyond these 10 principles, high integrity skills slash 33, that gives you 33 lines that you can use right now to create attraction. High integrity skills slash style four gives you my eight style attraction triggers. If you're an Asian guy, datingwithoutborders.net is my life's work. Deciphering what's different about Asian guys how to get past that cultural barrier, that bamboo ceiling. And then once you use the techniques to get past that, the dating principles of attraction that are the same, regardless of your race, but I give you specific techniques that you can use as an Asian guy that you can leverage so that your background and your ethnicity becomes an advantage rather than a perceived disadvantage, okay? So getting this handled, these are the resources that I've built, okay? I wish you success on your journey. Uh, It was a pleasure sharing these principles over the last 15 years and I hope they can help you on your next step. Enjoy.